So I'm going to show you how to use AI to do speaking practice in the language that you're learning. There are several different ways of doing it. And in this video, I'm going to show you just one of them, right? So you come here to the right, Active Recall, Translations, you click here. And the exercise is very simple. You will simply get sentences in English or whatever your native language is that you have to translate into the target language. You can do it by typing and saying it while you type it. Always say things aloud when you're uh, practicing language production. Or you can directly dictate. You can send voice messages, which is great if you're using this on your phone. So you get the sentence. It starts with basic A1 level sentences and it gradually increases the level. They get harder and harder if you don't make that many mistakes. Right? I've trained it to adjust to your level. And it will give you sentences at your level or slightly higher. Right? So I'm hungry. Let's do Stockholm uh, form. I've been doing Portuguese the last few days. So let's do that. Stockholm former, correct. Perfect. Slightly higher. My brother lives in a small apartment in Lisbon. No, Mal Mora M um apartamento pequeno em Lisboa. Saying it while you type is also great. But to get yourself used to uh corrected version. Meu irmão mora em um apartamento pequeno. Meu irmão mora em um apartamento pequeno. Yeah, it corrects spelling, like the accents and all of that. Ignore all of that. You don't need it if your goal is to understand and speak the language. If you want to get a C2 level and you want to pass exams and you want to work in the language and be a journalist, write articles in the language, whatever, then yes, you need to learn uh, the correct spelling of things. But if you don't care about any of that, 99% of you just want to be able to understand and speak the language. Ignore all of this completely, all right? If you're able to say it, the right word order, the right conjugations, uh, the right uh, masculine, feminine, and all of that, that's fine, right? Also, important to go fast when you do this. Instead of spending a lot of time thinking, what's the right, where's the accent? Like, if the goal is to improve fluency, do more sentences. Even if there are spelling mistakes, it's fine. Spelling mistakes, nobody notices them when you're speaking because you're not typing, right? Moved to Lisboa last year, uh, Lisbon last year, because I found a new job there. Eu uh, me mudei para Lisboa ano passado porque encontrei um trabalho lá. Eu me, me mudei para Lisboa no ano passado, no ano passado. You get mistakes like that. The more you do this, the more you realize where you make them and you will slowly correct those. Okay, B level. If I had more free time, I would travel uh, through South America. Se tivesse mais tempo livre, eu viajaria através so uh, America. America do Sul. Se eu tivesse mais tempo livre, eu viajaria pela América. Alright. Se eu tivesse. Better as se eu tivesse. Ok. Atraverso. São Spanish. Viajaria. Pela. Ok. Yeah. Uh, I still do some like Spanglish. It's not Spanglish. Uh, Portugal mistakes, like some Spanish. It's mostly Portuguese, but sometimes it's inevitable when you speak two languages that are very similar. Uh, America do Sul. Yeah. Capitalization, again. Spelling, irrelevant. These kind of things, relevant. The more you do this, the more you realize where you're making these mistakes and the faster you'll fix them. A lot of people live in a foreign country for decades and they still sound really bad. Like, they make lots of mistakes, lots of grammar mistakes, lots of, yeah, other, th other things as well, pronunciation, but this, this is not a pronunciation video, but a lot of grammar and vocabulary mistakes or very basic 
simple vocabulary still, because if they understand you, they don't correct you. Like once you get to a A1, A2 level where they, when you, where you've got just enough vocab to make yourself understood and you can use it confidently, people will just respond and they'll understand you and they'll just respond. And that's better than nothing, obviously, but if you don't do this kind of work, you will stop improving. So you need to keep doing this kind of thing as well. For example, eu me mudei. If you do, uh, how to move to a country, right? Eu fui para, para Lisboa. You, if you don't know the exact word for like, move to another country, you'd use like eu fui para Lisboa, for example. And you could say it like that forever if you didn't do this kind of work. So it's really important to do this, both to expand your active vocabulary, words that you maybe recognize, but then you can't think of them when you are trying to speak. This will tell you like you should have used this one. And also to correct all the grammar mistakes. Uh, my Portuguese is fluent, but then I make a lot of mistakes because I haven't done much. I haven't been doing much of this. All right. Uh, mesmo se estava cansado, decidi que é embora com meus amigos. That's why I want to, even if I can speak it fluently, I want to perfect it, stop making that many like, little mistakes. Because I mostly learned it by you know, repeating sentences and then talking. So, mesmo si, should be embora. So, embora, embora eu estive se cansado, decidi sair com meus amigos. Okay. I know about the traffic. Like, this is what you get at the sea levels. In order to be fluent, you don't need a sea level, right? Even in your native language, you rarely use this kind of, yeah, but if I had known about traffic, I would have left home much earlier. How often do you use this kind of structures? Be like almost never, barely. They're barely used in, in real conversation. It's great to know, but again, if you want fluency, like just spoken fluency, focus on doing a lot of like A2, B1, maybe B2 level structures over and over a lot with the least amount of mistakes possible and, and do it while speaking aloud. Uh, Se eu soubesse, uh, actually no, se eu teria sabido, yeah, tá, sobre o tráfico, uh, teria, uh, no, se eu soubesse, a lot, a lot of native speakers mess this up, up as well, like, if I, if I would do this, I would do that. Like Americans say that. Or like in, here in in Spain, a lot of people say uh, sabria instead of say supiera. This is, this is complicated <laughs> for native speakers. Se eu soubesse sobre o tráfico, teria deixado... Teria ido embora muito mais cedo. Again, these are no words, structures. Se eu tivesse sabido de, se eu tivesse sabido do trânsito, eu teria saído de casa muito mais cedo. Se eu tivesse, tivesse sabido. And you got a correction. Se eu tivesse sabido. Ah, ok. And then you get to C level. C1, C2. These are actually really complicated. Se eu... Now, uh, se não, se não fosse pelo seu conselho, eu não teria aceitado esse trabalho. Just want to show you the whole range of. Se não fosse pelo conselho dela, eu nunca teria aceitado aquele trabalho. 
Yeah, it was pretty close. Okay, this will take you all the way here uh, to C1, C2, now it's C2. This is the whole range, all right? What you should do is stay at, if you're still learning and you're not, uh, you're still struggling to speak, to have conversations, stay at, stay at uh, A2, B1 maybe. to focus on fluency. Did go to the party because I was feeling sick. No, for para a balada. Porque me senti ti That was in Maluco, which is crazy. Do Anchi. <laughs> I've said that before a couple of times to my coach. Yeah, I'm not going to train. I'm, I'm, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I mean, it's like Do Anchi, no maluco. Uh, now for para festa porque estava me sentindo mal. Estava me sentindo mal. Uh, when I was a child, I often played soccer with my friends. Soccer, football, we're in Europe. Cuando era crian, was the muchas veces jugaba fútbol con los meus amigos na rua. And this is a level you should stay at and do like a hundred of these sentences a day if you want to uh, speak fluent more fluently like improve your ability to think in the language and complete sentences better conjugations all of that but also just like improve overall like make me fewer mistakes um going higher like c, c level like like you could see, it's it's just not. How did you realize the consequences earlier? I would have acted differently. You're never going to say that in a foreign language. You're not going to say that in in your own language either. So unless you are you're an actor or something. So A two B one maybe B two and stay there and do a, a lot of this until you can do this flawlessly. This is what I recommend with this exercise. If you're starting from scratch like zero knowledge of the language. What I recommend you do is first create your language islands, start doing a lot of reps with it, uh, with your list, read and listen over and over, repeat them aloud, shadowing, copy the whole list, paste it here, and specifically tell the AI, feed me this in English, or give me, help me do active recall with these sentences in English. So that it'll give you the sentences you've been repeating over and over, the things you want to say from your language islands, instead of random sentences like this, to give you sentences from your language islands, which are much easier because, first of all, they're your own words, so they're relevant, but also you will have uh, repeated them a lot already, you'll have a lot of practice, and they'll be much easier to come up with. And then you practice translating into the target language, just language island sentences over and over until you can do it, uh, until you can say them easily with almost no mistakes. Okay, you can get there a, a few hundred sentences, you can learn them in a couple of days if you do this like, intensively. 